are, are you telling me that other places in the, in the state are giving a different instruction that it should be beyond a reasonable doubt? What I'm telling you, Ford, is that it appears that up until 1980, that was true. Defense attorneys for Brian Koberger make a compelling argument to throw out his grand jury indictment as the accused murderer wants this case to just go away. We've got the top three things you need to know about the defense's claims and what went down in court, including the ultimate major decisions from the judge. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. So is the case against Brian Koberger going to continue? That was the question this week that had to be answered in court, and we're going to talk about it right now. So Brian Koberger, of course, is the former Ph.D. student accused of stabbing to death four University of Idaho students last November in an off-campus home. Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal. He's currently facing four first-degree murder charges as well as a burglary charge. We know a lot of the evidence against Koberger, the cell phone data, the surveillance footage, his car, a match to DNA found at the crime scene, a potential eyewitness ID from a survivor in that house. But we also know that prosecutors presented their case in secret to a grand jury, and a grand jury returned an indictment against Brian Koberger. Well, that brings me to these latest set of hearings, because leading up to this, the defense has argued that that grand jury indictment should be thrown out, basically asking for this case to be dismissed. So first, there was one hearing that was held between the attorneys and Judge John Judge. That's his name, Judge John Judge. And this first hearing was held in private. There were no cameras. The decision hasn't been released. It concerned alleged bias by the grand jury. The reason it was closed is because by nature, grand jury proceedings, and of course, who the grand jurors are, is secret. But after that, we did have a public hearing. And first, the judge dropped a major decision that we weren't expecting. I'm sure you're probably interested in this. Uh, I haven't put a decision out uh, yet, but what I'm going to do is uh, take control of the cameras in the courtroom. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to ban cameras in the courtroom, but uh, I need to have more control over what the cameras are doing and what, uh, what media or people who are not media are doing with uh, the, the filming. I know I can only control so much, uh, and that's why I continue to uh, urge people to be patient and uh, have some dignity and some restraint. Now that is very big. Because there has been much debate about whether there would be cameras in the Brian Koberger trial. And based on Judge Judge's statements, it seems that we're going to have them. Or maybe I should say, as of right now, the Koberger case and its proceedings will have cameras. Hopefully we'll have it by the time trial comes. But it is not clear what he means when he says he's going to take control. Maybe that means they're going to use the court's own camera and not a media pool feed. We'll have to see. But one of the issues that has surfaced was the idea that the camera was spending too much time on Brian Koberger, and that's problematic. You know, it could taint a jury pool if they're turning on and all they see is this image of Brian Koberger, close-up shots of him. It's unfair public coverage if all the focus is just on the defendant. Whatever the case may be, this is a big win for transparency, a big win for seeing this process play out because so much of this case has been in secret. There's been a gag order in place. So this is a huge decision. Me personally, I love it. All in favor of cameras in the courtroom. Great decision. Okay, now let's move on to what the attorneys and the judge really were there to discuss that day. And that was the defense's motion to dismiss the indictment on the grounds that the grand jury instructions, what they were told, was wrong. I have to tell you, this is a very, very interesting argument from Koberger's defense. And honestly, I don't believe I've ever heard of it before. So it goes like this. It's a little complicated, but stay with me. So. The grand jury indictment of Koberger should be thrown out because the grand jurors were given the improper instructions as to the standard of proof. You see, while they were instructed to return an indictment if they find probable cause exists, meaning there's reasonable grounds to support that Brian Koberger committed these crimes, which, by the way, is the typical standard across the country in grand juries, and it's a relatively low standard, low burden, they they always say that you can indict a ham sandwich because the standard is so low. 
The defense is arguing that that is not the standard under Idaho law. The defense is saying that if you look at the Idaho statute, grand juries should only return an indictment if they find proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, not only is that standard higher than probable cause, it is actually the highest standard we have in criminal law, the highest legal bar. The reason the defense says this is because under the Idaho Code, the Idaho statute, it says, quote, the grand jury ought to find an indictment when all the evidence before them taken together, if unexplained or uncontradicted, would, in their judgment, warrant a conviction by a trial jury. The defense says, well, if you are saying the evidence would mean a conviction at trial, then that is beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the standard at a criminal trial. They're saying it's equal. So since the grand jurors were instructed, as the defense says, on the wrong standard, they say the indictment has to be thrown out. In other words, the defense is saying maybe the grand jury would have come back with an indictment anyway, but you have to hold the prosecutors to their burden. They have to show more evidence. There's a higher standard. So here's the thing. They want the judge to either toss out the grand jury indictment, dismiss the case, or send the case to a preliminary hearing to decide if there's enough evidence to go forward with a trial against Koberger. You see, if the case goes to a preliminary hearing and not a grand jury, then it's decided by a judge, not a grand jurors. And it's not secret like a grand jury. The defense can hear the prosecution's evidence. They can even present or challenge some of the state's evidence. By all accounts, now that we know that cameras would be in the courtroom, it would be televised. Now, obviously, prosecutors went with the grand jury against Koberger because, in a way, it's easier. It's more stream- streamlined to get an indictment that way than through a preliminary hearing. So now you've heard what the defense's argument is. Clearly, the prosecution's not agreeing with this. Let's hear the arguments in court. Here is Koberger's attorney, Jay Logsdon. And first, he's explaining that the Idaho Code, the statute, means beyond a reasonable doubt and how... We're just discovering this issue today because it seems Idaho has consistently been using probable cause for grand juries, and that might be the wrong standard. And the first question that a court has to ask is, what does that mean? And you start with the plain language, which we argue, what warrants a finding or a conviction by a trial jury is beyond a reasonable doubt. And it meant that back in... 1887, when the territory took all of these statutes, uh, almost entirely from the state of California, and it means it today. Uh, and then we also pointed out that the great state of California, when they had these on their books from back in the 50s, had already a case in 1962 where they said that it's clearly something more than probable cause, but they weren't too specific about exactly what it meant. And so I'm now put in a position of trying to explain why that occurred and why, in the year of our Lord 2023, we are suddenly finding out that that's not quite how things are supposed to be. Why did we forget that we passed all these laws? And I don't have a great answer for that, but nobody's really been digging into this or raising it until this time. So when the court says, look, the Supreme Court's already got a rule on this, Supreme Court's already ruled on it. It's just not true. They have never ruled that probable cause is the basis because there was an argument about it. And they said, no, 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 you're wrong. That's probable cause. That, that hasn't occurred. They ruled a lot of things, but that's not one of the ones. And then he says, well, if the grand jury was instructed as to the wrong standard, not only is their decision not accurate, not only is that indictment valid, But he gives us a behind-the-curtains look at what the grand jurors may have been thinking. Yeah, he kind of says something here that he shouldn't. And he explains that if the grand jurors were given the higher standard, they may not have returned an indictment. What it's intended to do is just make it so that if you're in a position to get an indictment, you're going to put on your your A-game. Obviously, we've been talking a bit about we don't think that that's what occurred in this particular case. And we certainly don't think that if the court were to adopt this in this particular case, that this would even remotely cut the mustard because we know from the grand jurors that at least six of them wanted to hear more until they were essentially cut off and told probable cause is the standard and what do you people do it? You probably should cut that. What, what the uh, grand jurors did or didn't do. 
Hmm, that is interesting. Grand jurors on the fence wanted to hear more evidence. That's a pretty big bombshell, and the judge stopped them there. Well, then Logsdon says, okay, now for all of you out there who are like, okay, wait a second. If now we force grand juries to only return indictments, if they have to meet this higher standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, we're never going to get indictments, right? It's going to be chaos. He says that's not the case. There have been convictions. There won't be this kind of issue as people claim. And then the prosecution, after the defense had the chance to make this argument, they had their chance to respond and basically said, look, this is the law of the land. Probable cause is the standard. It's constantly and consistently been upheld. So in Edmondson, the Supreme Court said, and I quote, the purpose of the grand jury proceeding is to determine whether sufficient probable cause exists to bind the defendant over for trial. The determination of guilt or innocence is saved for a later day. As long as the grand jury has received legally sufficient evidence, which in and of itself supports the finding of probable cause, it is not for an appellate court to set aside the indictment. This court is bound by that holding. Uh, the Idaho Supreme Court applied that holding in two subsequent cases, Martinez and Jones, both cited in my brief. The Court of Appeals has applied that holding repeatedly. This court is also bound by its holdings. Basically saying, there's no issue here. Well, now, Judge Judge had the opportunity to give his take. To just say, well, they gave, they were given the wrong uh, instruction is not exactly the case. I mean, that is the standard that has been used uh, in Idaho for years, maybe 100 years. I'm taking a fight about it. And you may have the opportunity to do that to the Supreme Court. Well, and that's what you're and, building. And that's, that's what you're building for. Because that's, you know, you know that I am constrained by the by existing law. I can't just change the law as a trial court. I, I appreciate the argument. I think it's really uh, creative. I am going to deny that uh, that argument. I think the argument is good, but I can't go that far. Uh, not today. So the judge actually appreciated the argument, but he can only do so much. He's not the Supreme Court where perhaps Mr. Logsdon should argue this if he wants a change in the state. So the motion was denied, meaning the indictment stands and Brian Kohlberger is still headed to trial. That's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.